Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Spink. I'm an innovation strategist with Local Government Federal Credit Union. Uh, we're based in Raleigh. We serve uh, about close to 300,000 municipal, county uh, employees, volunteers, elected officials, and their families in North Carolina. Uh, we have assets about pushing about $2 billion, so we're one of the bigger credit unions in North Carolina. A couple little stories of, of things that I have found as an innovation strategist, and as I've learned to put labels on some things, I've kind of learned I've always thought this way, and I'm, I imagine a lot of people in this room too, too. Uh, empathy is a huge part of what we do. To get to understand, uh, you can call it, it goes on to human-centric design, if you're familiar with IDEO or any of those kind of design groups, it's kind of how they go about things. Um, but it's getting really close to the members and understanding what they really need. Uh, and you have a unique opportunity because you're so intimately involved in fabric of your communities that you serve, and you're seeing those people face to face. Uh, we do it more because we serve through SECU by a lot of people out in the field. All right, back, I'll, I'll go through a couple of stories real quick. Way back, I guess at the time, it was probably about 2007, right before a whole bunch of stuff happened in the financial world, um, our CFO, uh, and this is kind of intimacy through data, which we don't have as much as we'd like, but he was looking at a lot of things that were going on in the economy, a lot of our members and their, their kind of financial profiles and how they lied, and we realized there's going to be a major housing hit coming really, really soon. What can we do for our members? So we started digging in, and we found, I think it was, I can't remember, it was 113 or 121 of our members. They didn't have mortgages with us, but by looking at their transaction histories and who they were paying and what they were doing, we thought, you know, these small group of people out of, at that time, we probably had, I would say probably 175,000 members. It was about 113 or 121. I gotta, now I've got to find out that number. Um, that looked like they had a profile that they could fall into something really bad on their mortgage. So it was kind of weird to communicate to people to say, hey, uh, we're looking at your stuff and looks like you might crash real soon. But it was very carefully worded, um, having known our members and, you know, not, you know, taking it from the academic level and the data down to, hey, your world might get disrupted. Um, and we worked with some folks and we, we had some responses. And in the end, we kept one family from losing their home. So we all sat around to do the post-mortem on this, and you know, with all the time and effort that went in, you know, data analytics and all can get a little costly, and we thought about everything we put into it, and I was like, you know, we got one family. And we said, you know what, that was worth it. Because to that one family, to lose your home? And we thought about ourselves, and we said, all right, this was worth it. And that was the first time I'd been at the credit union about four years, and made me realize, like, wow, this is a different animal here because it's not just about the profit. It cost us more than it may have been seen by others to be worth it, but to us it was worth it because we knew to that family it was worth it. Let me tell you, go back to the firefighters. Um, we were very happy, 150 of them turned out to uh, keep our building from going down too. Um, in 2003, uh, we started, we got very close to the North Carolina State Firemen's Association. Uh, they do a lot for firefighters, about 50,000 firefighters in North Carolina, most of them volunteers, probably 45,000 of them. Uh, insurance, hazard kind of insurance, health care, uh, the various things that the uh, benefits, um, helping falling firefighters, what that association did, and they were kind of struggling. So what can we do to help these guys out? So we have debit cards. We designed a debit card that's specifically for firefighters. And uh, this is where, again, it goes into that kind of triple bottom line. We pay, you guys are familiar with merchant fees, right? You got to pay Visa, and Visa says, well, you got to pay them. So Visa, you know, is doing this. So you've got the merchant fee, Visa takes that, and then they take half, and we get half on the cards that we issue. So that we decided, you know what? We, we make a good amount of money on interchange, and it's very, very important to us. But these guys need some help. So we took those cards. If they swipe that card, 50% of the merchant fee that we get goes to the State Firemen's Association. And I just found out about a month ago, since that card's been in place, we've given them approximately $2 million to be able to offer these services to our first responders. And it's a tough job. Um, so that brings me to, and this will be kind of the last story of that, getting close to the members and really trying to understand what their needs are to help drive your decisioning. Uh, Someone gave me this. I went, went in to talk to one of our commercial real estate guys, Coe. Who's familiar with Coe, North Carolina? Not even Asheville people? 
They're west of Asheville. Um, no, not Cullowee, Coe. Cullowee, if we're looking at Cullowee's like around in here, you know, Asheville, Cullowee, Coe's just over from them. I think it's like a 30 mountain, 30 minute mountain drive. Coe was our first commercial loan. One of our member development officers, people out in the, the field talking to different local governments, what's going on, firefighters are a big part of our membership. Uh, stopped by and was talking to some of them guys. They were in a bad spot. Um, firefighters wear turnout gear, that heavy canvas kind of stuff and their helmets and all that. Come to find out there's disposable turnout gear. It's good for six uses, I think up to like eight, 900 degrees. And once those exposures are had, you throw this stuff away. These guys have been using their stuff for six or seven years because they couldn't afford $60,000 to outfit their, 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 their volunteers, um, and no bank wanted to finance clothing. So we thought, well, we, we want these guys to go home after they're you know, out trying to protect our homes and our communities. Uh, so we figured out they, they had an old piece of apparatus. We said, we, we got to use collateral. You can't just you know, do those kind of loans without it. We said, we can collateralize that. They said, well, no one wants to collateralize that thing. It's too old. We were like, well, it's worth at least 70000 So. Uh, we did that underwriting for them and got them their turnout gear, which was huge. Now, we did another one later down east, uh, got those guys some air packs, which was a good example. But the Coe guys, we are still, we're our first one. In 2016 was our 10-year anniversary of our commercial lending project. And I talked to the guy that's handled that relationship all the way through. Early on, we helped them get that turnout gear. But then he realized, like, we, 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 we don't know what we're doing in accounting, really. We're just firefighters, you know. We're, we're painters and landscapers. We don't know this stuff. So we really sat down with them a lot. What are you trying to accomplish? Where are you trying to go? Um, and your families, the people that come see you, they're all trying to figure out where they're trying to go to. Uh, so we said, you know, they had aspirations. They saw growth that was coming. Not a whole lot, but, you know, how are we going to better serve our community? So a few years later, we helped them get a piece of apparatus. Uh, that they otherwise, we got them a better interest rate, better terms. Uh, but then they realized they needed a building. And we were like, you're not in really good shape to be worrying about a building right now because of the expense. Uh, and work with them to restructure their debt. They had a lot of different, various pieces of debt. And we work with them to find out, well, what do you, what do you got here? What are you trying to accomplish? Because it's not a matter of just getting you a better rate and save you a few bucks. We all like that. But where is that going to take you? And that was to that station, uh, which is in the process of being built right now. Uh, and they're, I guess, about probably about three, four months out. Um, but I talked to the fellows. I was talking to the loan officer, and I was like, well, who have you been working with the same guy? And he said, well, no, actually, the fellow that's now the chief, Dustin Pendergrass, who I've met years and years ago, he used to be the assistant chief. And then he passed with time, and now he's working directly with Dustin uh, to help them get where they need to be. Um, so I'll offer those three examples. Um, so I'm close to another. We got, I got a lot of different stories that I could go on on all the individual members, but I think it's how the the broader impacts that you make, how they come down as we were talking, that, that wellness thing. Because I really wholly believe, we work with financial, financial wellness sounds like such a trite term, um, but we're really trying to help families move themselves forward and look out for their best interests. So we charge, we get better rates, we charge lower fees, we're not real punitive because people are just trying to get along and we understand that by getting as close as we can to them. Um, so I want to take up a lot of time, um, but I do want to say as an innovation strategist and I've been around, Mark told me this morning that the first cafe was over in our building which was kind of cool. I do some stuff with Weaver Street and all and I'm just very interested in co-ops and just things in general. Um, so if you're ever pondering things as groups or individuals and you just want to chat or talk about ideas or things that you're working on, I get really jazzed about that stuff, especially when it's not financial services, uh, because I truly believe we find the answers by connecting all the dots. And a lot of dots that I'm around day to day, they're all kind of the same dots. So I invite you. I, I don't have any cards with me, but you can always get to me through Mark. Um, really cool being here. I'll hang out for a little while, but then I got to go home and do some schoolwork. Um, but it's really cool. And I got to say, is there anyone from American Ground in here? Like less than 24 hours from Mark and I getting together to address the fire situation, American Underground stood up. Um, and I just think that's really cool. So I think they deserve some accolades. So hopefully I didn't take too much time. And pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.